Hello friends, I got another uh, duck profile for you guys today. It's premium and it's a uh, royal paladin this time instead of uh, golds. So that's going to be fun for everyone, yay! So um, it's the Alfred build. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to like use this deck because for the most part I keep on like getting my ass kicked. Um, but we're going to figure that out together I guess. So we're basically going to go through this my choices. Uh, you guys can give your input on what you guys think of my build as well. So maybe we can all learn something together through this little experience here. So the starter is Elrond. So you, it's an Alfred deck, so you're always going to be on an Alfred Vanguard for the most part. So the skill is if you have an Alfred Vanguard, you can search for a grade, I believe it's two or less, except for Elrond, from your deck and call it to rear. It's pretty much targeting anything that you'll need, so when you stride or when you're going for Tarnas, search is whatever target you're looking for. So Elrond's a really good starter for the Alfred deck. So for my build I'm running four copies of Alfred Early. Um, Alfred Early, even though you need a blaster and the solar hand, it's still really good because it has an on-ride skill versus an act ability, so you can still use it when you ride. Alfred early skill is when it's placed from Vanguard Sergei you can bust one, put a blaster blade, Facebook Messenger be coming, um, put a blaster blade from hand or soul to the Vanguard Circle, it gets 10k, and if you call blaster blade, you get to draw a card. So, next up, we got three copies of Monarch Sanctuary Alfred. So, we're doing Monarch Alfred for the same reason, it's an on ride ability. Uh, he has a passive ability. Uh, during your turn where Blast Blade is 10k and they have 5k extra shield. Uh, the reason I'm doing um, more Alfred Earlies than Monarch Alfreds is because um, right from the get-go you're going to want to write Alfred Early since you probably won't even have any Blaster Blades in drop. Yes, it's kind of the same thing, but Alfred Early gives you a draw, whereas uh, Monarch is just a recycler. And so Monarch has kind of a better pref presence like in the later game and also after you've already got you know, blast play going so early's there for more draws and you know sanctuary's there for late game. So as the main right targets, lastly for the grade threes out of our eight, one copy of my favorite card in the game, Solitary Night Gants a lot. Really excited for it to come to standard, but for premium, uh, this version's still really good. It basically acts like an additional blaster blade because its uh, skill is act when it's in your hand. You can reveal this card to your opponent and you search your deck for blaster blade. Uh, put Blast Blade in your hand and shuffle this back into the deck. So, you know, I don't, I'm honestly thinking about running more copies of this just to see Blaster Blade more often, but I also just don't want to run into it where I have to write it and I can't G-assist out of it. So for now, the one copy of uh, Gancelot's pretty good. So that was it for Grade 3. The reason I'm not running King of Knights, Alfred, is because well, he, he doesn't have the... He uh, doesn't have an on-write ability... And since, um, you know, you can only call him out with Blaster Blade with his act ability and then you're going to be striding anyways, it's kind of inconsistent and only really works if you're going first and if you see, you know, you have to use Tarna to pull it out. And at that point, it's really not really worth it when you can just pull out Monarch Alfred. So four copies of the man himself, the card that makes this deck function, it's Blaster Blade. It's kind of how Royal Paladins function to begin with nowadays. So it's... Fits on Van, and you have four rear guards. He gets a crit, <clears throat> and when he's placed, you can have a soul blast. Choose one of your opponents from rear guards and retire it. Probably never going to use those. We're just using it for the blaster name. Next up for grade twos, we're running four copies of Javelin Larouche. Really, really important card for this Alfred deck because he pulls out your Flogels. So Larouche's skills: if you have an Alfred Vanguard. When it's placed, uh, you put two cards in your hand in the soul, and you have to call two high beasts from your deck to open rear guard circles. The open part makes it a little tricky, kind of figuring out how your plays are going to go for the most part, but it's pretty simple. It pulls out Flogel. So um, you definitely want to run four. It also pulls out uh, Packle, which you run four of, and Packle is really good because it has a, it's basically the counter charge engine of the deck, so that's how you get your counter boss back after using the Flogels. So you definitely want to see this as much as possible, so we're running four copies of it. Next up, three copies of Lou. Lou is there because we run two 
blasters. We're in Blaster Blade and Blaster Javelin. So the main search target is going to be Blaster Javelin because you search it out, pull out more Flogels. So lose skill is when it's boosted by Flogel or Blaster from Barkle. We're not running Barkle in the deck because we don't have a Blaster Vanguard and it's kind of wonky trying to fit it in there. But uh, when it's boosted by uh, Flogel, uh, Floral Pile and Flogel or Blaster from Barkle, you can, at the end of its attack, Please when it's attacks a Vanguard, right? Nope, it's just when it's attacks. Cool. So Cannon Blast 1, put this into your soul, and you search your deck for a grade 2 with Blaster, and the call target gets 3k. So, and you can search it out with Twin Sword and with um, Elrond, so might as well. Three copies is enough. And lastly, for grade 2s, two copies of Tarna. Tarna is uh, not as great as Wonder as a whole, just because... Um, there's not really much of a main phase um, pickup you can really do with this deck, and you don't have like a superior ride and a Alfred. But uh, Tarnus skill is just like Wonder Ezel, except for Alfred. It's if you have a grade 3 Vanguard with Alfred standing, search for an Alfred, ride it as stand, and it gets 5k. So you do this to get multiple gifts to stack under Blaster Blade, just like how the deck's always done. Um, Tarna really doesn't do anything after you start striding, because you have to keep striding every turn, and taking one turn to just stack. Force markers kind of sucks because you lose drive checks and you need crits to stack on blaster blade. So, yep, definitely kind of wonky, but I feel like the two tarn is still good just in case one goes away and you want to search for the other one. So that was it for grade twos. On to grade ones. Four copies of Sisyllus Stride Fodder. Uh, we're gonna be rewriting our grade threes a lot, so you want Stride Fodder to pay for Stride, and since we're only running eight grade threes. You want to be able to stride, so the stride fodders do come in handy. Next up is four copies of Packel. So Packel is your other search target other than Flogel. The reason I'm running four is because you want to see it when you need it, and you don't have to worry about, like, oh, I used up all three or all two. I really need the counter charge right now. It's just more copies guaranteeing that I get it out of the way, and then it doesn't really matter if you ride it because you want to have the damage to pay for costs anyways. So having search target for uh, Javelin is really important. So that's why I'm running Packle at four. And uh, just as a tech, I'm running one copy of uh, Wingle. I'm really not going to try and use it that often, but if for whatever reason, like I only have one Counter Blast open and I don't have any Packles, and I'm like, well, I can only use one flo uh, Floral Pout and Flogel. Anyways, let's call it Wingle and a Flogel. And if I put it in the same column as Blaster Blade, that extra 5k given to Blaster Blade might help with uh, pushing for game. It also has the 10k shield, so it's good with Marin, the G-Guard. So its skill is all blast plays in the same column during your turn get 5k, so pretty decent. And then lastly, I'm only running three perfect guards, two of the Leon and one of the the one from the trial deck. The reason I'm only running three PGs is because this deck is trying to be really aggressive and you want to take advantage, you don't really want to run the draw PGs because you want to run crits. Uh, I could take out the Wingle for another PG, but for the most part I really want to have search targets and I don't have to worry about the deck kind of clunking, which is normal units. I want to filter them out as much as possible. So really this deck is kind of like hit or miss for the most part. This is the way I build it. The two Leans are just for in their hand and this one is for uh, searching it out with Marin for the PG for the um, superior PG from the deck. So, not too much defense, but a lot of Alfred uh, builds are kind of like that, where they're just like super focused on the aggro. So, next up is triggers. So, we're running the new crit from the premium collection. So, it's the Hearthstone clone, GB1. When your Vanguard attacks, uh, you put this in the soul, you draw a card, it gets 10k. It's also a high beast, so you can surge it out with uh, Javelin. But, uh, the most important thing about this is if you use it to boost um, Twin Sword, you can do the um, you can do the skill of Twin Sword first. Call out two grade twos, and you call out Javelin. Javelin goes in standby. You, you since uh, since the attack is being attacked when your Vanguard attacks, you can move it to the soul. You'll lose the boost power, but you'll free up a, a spot behind your Vanguard to call a High Beast target from Javelin. So that's where Amulet. Uh, Eagle comes in handy for those turns. And, you know, it's a crit with the skill. You should run crits with skills. 
Speaking of crits with skills, here's a crit with the skill. It's Floral Paladin Flogel. So it's uh, at the end of the battle that your rear guard blaster blade attacked a vanguard. You combo one, put this back in the deck, and you stand it. So you just restand that blaster blade with all those force markers. It's a 5k uh, power trigger and 10k shield, but it's still really good. So you're going to run four copies of it. And it's your target for Javelin. Uh, next up, we're running 12 crit. So more V triggers. Uh, just the, um, the ones from the trial deck. You know, they're two and two because why not? Art's nice. And I'm not running the uh, Alfred crit because it has a 5k shield and it doesn't work when you're on a G unit. And last but not least, I'm doing two copies of Remedy Angel and two Elaine. I would do four Elaine just because the counter charge is fine with pack gold, but a lot of times I might be just one kind of last short where I'm like, oh man, if I had one more, I could call another flow goal and get that one extra attack, I want to at least have Remedy Angel to help me guarantee that. So it doesn't hurt, especially since the heal triggers are only for G-guarding anyways. The 5k power from Remedy Angel might hurt when I'm drive checking and I give power to Blaster Blade, but because uh, Saint Twin Sword uh, has the auto when your unit's placed from deck, it gets power for each face-up card in the G-zone, that helps kind of with the power gap with triggers and the 5k triggers and you know, hitting for big numbers. So I feel like it's not too much of an issue, but, you know, counter charging is really important in this deck, so I want to take advantage of it. So that was it for the main deck. We're going to go on to the G zone. Two copies of Saint of Twin Sword from the Premium Collection 2019. First skill is when it attacks the Vanguard while boosted, like, kind of like the original Twin Sword, um, you uh, counter blast turn a card from your G-Zone face up, uh, search deck for two grade twos, call them to rear guard circles, and then shuffle the deck. So really simple, just call two grade twos. The other skill is when your unit is placed from the deck, it gets 5k for each face up card in your G-Zone. So later, like, probably like your second stride going into this, the Blast Blades are going to be way more powerful. You got G-Guardians helping you fill up that requirement as well. So it's going to, and then the multi-attacking that comes with uh, Twin Sword helps beat up your opponent a little more that way as well. So really good card, good for helping you finish up games and calling out targets. Because the main problem with the offer deck before was the setup and how your main strides were either going to be Peace Saver or um, Divine Knight Alt Mile, which would, you know, you wouldn't get anything with Peace Saver and you'd only get one grade two with Alt Mile. So uh, Saint of Twin Sword is a good addition to the G deck. Next up, we got two copies of Gansalot Peace Saver. So Peace Saver is still a really good first stride. It's um, when it attacks, uh, if you have a heart with, with Alfred or Blaster, so you have an Alfred heart, you counter charge and you get 12 quad drive. And if you have a phase of card in your G zone, it gets a crit. And then while it's in the G zone, during your turn, Blast Blades get resist. Not too worried about that because not too many things um, in the meta, I guess, for premium really kill stuff during your own turn, kind of like how Kagero had with uh, Denial Griffin and Hedor around for Gear Chronicles. So not too big of an issue right now, but it's still nice. It's there. Gansalot's still a good card. Two copies of Alfred Holy Saver. I never really go into this, but it's more drive checks to put on Blast Blade if I can pay the cost and I really have nothing else to do. If I can't go into Twin Sword, you know, it's there for certain scenarios, but I do really like the fact that it gives Blaster Blade um, Twin Drive, so it uh, makes your opponent kind of like have to make a two to pass when they're guarding against it. Um, I don't want to stand, so restanding that rear guard is not like a thing that I can do, but it's, yeah, it's there. So, next up, Link Joker still exists. Two copies of Squire Dragon. Um, yeah. It's really just there for the Link Joker matchup. It's mostly flip fodder for a Twin Sword if I know I'm not playing against Link Joker. If I am playing against Link Joker, I'll probably use uh, Holy Saver as flip fodder. But other than that, its skill is um, to give 2k to all your rear guards, and then GB3, it gets 3k for all your rear guards. So this could help if you just need a really big Vanguard to swing for numbers. But other than that, it's really just for the Link Joker matchup. Then we're running one copy of Agnos, just because I can and I have it, and, you know, 
if I have the hand to just throw a board down and draw some cards, it's there. And free striding's cool. And also if my opponent doesn't give me counterblasts, I can still just go into it and then free stride for the rest of the game. And then one copy Ultima, because Ultima is still good, because, you know, guaranteeing your crits to put on Blaster Blade is really nice. And it's a decent finisher. So that's it for the uh, G units, for the G Guardians. I am running two copies of Maskell. Uh, Maskell flips up G units face up, which helps with uh, Twin Sword, because, you know, it gives power for each face up card in your G zone. So Maskell's skills, if you have a grade 2 in your front row, GB1, you flip a G Guardian, and it gets 10k shield. Pretty simple, good shield value. You know, flipping G units face up. Two copies of Marin. Uh, Marin helps you deck thin. It can search out PGs if there are certain attacks like, oh, I have to PG this, it's too big, which happens a lot when you're playing against like NLK. Um, so it's Soul Blast 1. Search your deck for a grade uh, 1 or greater card called to guard against plus 5 shield. Your targets are either the PG or Wingle, since Wingle is the only great uh, normal unit with 10k shield. So, you know, if you don't have the PG, you can search that out for more shield. And I run two, so I can use both, if both Wingle and the PG are in my deck. Uh, lastly, for G Guardians, we're running one copy of Great uh, Flash Shield Assault. Um, you know, if I have three rear guards, that's plus 15 shield, and, you know, if I can counter charge using the uh, Remedy Angels counter charge, I don't have to really about pay the cost. It's also flip fodder for uh, Maskell. And then one copy of Dismal. Uh, this is just in case I ran out of Blaster Blades. I don't have Monarch to filter it to you know, get it back. And I don't want them to kill it. So I run Dismal so I can guarantee that my Blaster Blade stays alive that I need for the next turn. That was it for the deck profile. Um, as someone who's probably watching this and is like a devoted Alfred Royal Paladin premium player out there somewhere, they're probably really triggered at my build for whatever reason. And I'd like to know why. Because I actually genuinely want to have this build be good, but I do feel like I struggle a lot trying to put it together. It was a lot of fun when I first made it. I do think the premium blaster deck has a lot more consistency just because of how well blasters synergize with each other in the early game. The... OTK you can do if your opponent doesn't have a PG on grade 2 and you just swing at them with over 70k with 6 or 7 damage. It's fun. Um, but with Alfred, I feel like it takes a lot of setup and it's kind of hard to push, especially how fast a lot of these decks are in the premium format right now. But if you have guys have any ideas on deck lists, that would be good. You know, let me know. Hit me up. Put them in the comments. Uh, that's pretty much it for this deck profile. Thanks guys for watching. Leave a comment, like, subscribe, and I was Richard, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.